Okay, let's keep this brief. Uh, your research project proposal is going to be really the first chance I get to kind of interact with your choice of topic, with your plans for proceeding with uh, that topic, and also your opportunity maybe even to spell it for yourself what exactly it is you're hoping to accomplish with your research project. This assignment is important. Uh, that's why it has so many components to it uh, because you know, the writing is a process, and I want you to have a plan in place. Now, that's not to say that every writer needs a, a rock-solid, concrete blueprint for how to proceed with their essay. Many people kind of write and see kind of where their muse takes them, and I'm all for that mostly. But I have to expose you to this sort of level of planning and consideration so that in future writing assignments, uh, you are at least aware of what's you know what what many writers do do you have to follow this protocol exactly of course you don't but uh this sort of thinking is always just going to this sort of planning i guess is uh it's it's it, it guarantees more success i guess so let's let's just look at these um eight or so components and um i'm just going to talk over i'm going to talk about them one at a time uh the topic of your research project hopefully that comes pretty easily to you by the time you're watching this um you know you know, there's this idea called elevator pitch, you know, where you uh, need to boil down what you're working on into, you know, 20 seconds worth of talk. Uh, and that's really what we're looking for here is like, what's your elevator pitch for this uh, project? And I also want to make sure that you're spending time talking about it being uh, narrow and focused. So make sure that that's uh, present and active. All right. Uh, what is your something significant? And include the citation for it. You need some sort of orienting factor, something to get your essay going, sort of the the motor that you drop into it uh, before you proceed. Uh, and tell me the story of how you found your something significant. And if you skip over this step, well, then you're making this essay even harder than it already is, I guess. Uh, and kind of relatedly, what is the ongoing academic conversation you'll be entering with your research project? That is my way of kind of checking in on, uh, making sure that you know of the, you know, can you explain the controversy involved in your topic? Can you explain how different people can think about your topic, different stances they can have, different theories they might uh, contribute to it, and then what are you going to add? What, what, what's the conversation? And then, well, down here we'll talk about fresh thinking. So what are people saying about your topic? Uh, and this hopefully will help you, you know, you'll, you'll hopefully draw a red flag uh, if you realize that no one's really talking about your topic. Well, then does that make it uh, worthy of study? You know, sort of thing. Uh, what is your narrow and focused, there's those words again, narrow focused, narrow focused research question. What is, uh, you know, the agenda for your essay. What are your, what are your goals with it? You hopefully know what a research question is by now. Uh, and if, you know, this one here, number five, your thesis statement, what's it look like today? Of course, writing evolves and grows and changes and adapts and a bunch of other things. But today, what it does your thesis statement look like? And I said this on a previous screencast that some people write the thesis statement and build their papers outward from it. Uh, I'm definitely one of those people, but uh, lots of people sort of write the paper first, or at least uh, get a rough schematic of the paper uh, in place, and then kind of um, lets that uh, let that, lets that plan sort of dictate what the thesis statement is. We don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of a, a writer or planner you are, so you may want to try one or two of those strategies. But what's your thesis statement look like? Um, now, very much related to number three is number six. And I feel like these these questions kind of make sense as they go down. I hope you're you know they're sort of um, you can see their relations to one another. What fresh thinking are you adding to the ongoing conversation? What new ideas will you contribute? So again, I'm trying to get you to think deeply about what am I really adding to uh, this this topic? And that's again why I like stories that are you know topics that um uh, begin as news stories, maybe something that you read about uh, you know in a, in in the news in some way, uh, so that you can have that opportunity for fresh thinking. All right. So uh, again, don't skimp on any of these. Answer them as fully as you can. Oh, and just, I don't know, four minutes in a word about format. If you want to make, um, you know, if you're more sort of a visually engaging person, you want to make a, a screencast uh, like this or something much better, I'd assume, uh, or, you know, if you want to make a slideshow or anything else, um, feel free to. This doesn't have to be written up, although most of you probably will choose that option. It doesn't have to be. Okay, number seven is uh, your research and support. And I want you to provide at least a working references or works cited page. Now, if you do this um, well, to, you know, for this assignment, you will find that the annotated bibliography assignment will be very, very easy to complete. Uh, and that's kind of my sneaky agenda for you there. Uh, just a reminder for this assignment that at least two of your sources need to be academic journals, and those will be found on Academic Search Complete or the Opposing Viewpoints Resource Center. 
Um, every now and again, I'll have a student who actually reads a book. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, you want to run it by me to make sure it's sort of academically rigorous, I'll be happy to. Um, so if you you know do find yourself with a book cool, that would count towards one of your academic uh, sources. Let's even make that sources, not journals. Sources, editing and action. Let's do that. Okay, so anything you find in academic search complete or opposing viewpoints uh, will be fine. Uh, at least two popular sources, that is to say, um, stuff you find online, more or less. Uh, newspapers, magazines. I made this list. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, you got this whole list here um, that I provided with you, tried to you last week. That is all about um, you know different sources out there that are online, and um, these writers are all paid to write. Everybody who works for these uh, these publications make money, um, and that tends to enhance the quality of the writing and the quality of the journalism. So at least two popular sources. Go nuts with the popular sources. Once you hit your two academic sources, um, you know, I imagine many of you are going to end up doing the popular ones, which is fine. Um, I could <laughs> I could pull you over to the campfire and tell you about the golden days when there were no the, then when no one was allowed to use popular sources, but uh, and it was all academic sources. And this was you know 15, 10 years ago anyway. Um, but that's certainly the the the, the tides have changed um, quite a bit since then. So yeah, popular sources are definitely part of uh, I guess the uh, uh, sense the, the idea of scholarship as we know it in uh, you know today's sort of world. And then uh, finally, uh, one piece of primary research. Okay, you uh, either need to conduct this research yourself, or you can find uh, online at least one of these. And there are lots more types of primary research. Um, I guess I can even add a couple more of this. An interview is going to be the most likely one. You interview an expert or someone whose opinion is relevant to the topic at hand. Many of you are dealing with things like, you know, cyberbullying or um, what it means to kind of be a high school student. So interviewing a fellow high school student is not a terrible idea. Uh, or if you want to observe a group or uh, a location, uh, you know, you go, you take notes, and uh, then you make sense of your notes. And uh, there's also, of course, a survey. So kind of same thing with the interview. Like if you, you know, want to you know, tally some data, I guess, and see like how many maybe students have been, you know, cyberbullied or how many have felt, you know, uh, how many have texted while they've been driving, that sort of thing. Um, that's fine. Uh, uh, primary research is usually what we do more in College Comp 2, um, so I just want to introduce it to you here before we move on to that next semester. Uh, so yeah, you have to provide insight, um, at least one of these. If you have all these for the proposal, awesome. If you don't, not the worst thing in the world, not the best thing either. Uh, and then finally, wrapping up here, um, a rough outline or idea cluster or a slideshow of your plan. So how are you going to organize all this stuff? How exactly are you going to go, you know, sort of bit by bit, piece by piece, you know, portion by portion, whatever you want to think of it, as uh, for your, your research project's organization. So uh, do what feels right for that one, too. And the whole goal of this assignment uh, isn't to cause you to do unnecessary sort of busy work. If you really, if you do this proposal and you do it well, you're going to have uh, a really easy time getting started because we're not quite there yet, but every every semester I get all these emails. Oh, I just can't get started. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, I'm showing you what to do. I'm, you know, if you complete this proposal here, you'll have plenty to think about and plenty to begin your paper with. Uh, and that's ultimately the goal. So that we can focus more on the writing than on the, what is this essay going to be about and how am I going to organize it. Uh, we can dig much deeper and actually focus on how to write our best. And uh, that's, that, I think that's, I think it's what you're paying me to do in a very roundabout way. So on that note, uh, email me any questions.